Welcome back to Prime Morning, and I hope that you are sending in your messages and you are already uh, thinking of how best to uh, put together or summarize your experiences when it comes to how long you've been in a relationship and maybe you're quite skeptical about whether you should continue being in that long relationship or you should end it and just leave. But under what circumstances or at what point should be the right time for you to say, I'm ending it? over. I have to move on. My name is Esi Odua Komia, and it's time for Let's Talk Relationship, and that's our topic for discussion. Our guests, my guests are seated, and they are in the persons of, both of them are no strangers to us at all, and it's always exciting having them here. Reverend Anaya Prempe, relationship coach and chairman of, and CEO tonight for group. Good morning, mommy. Morning. Thanks oh. for having me. Thanks for being here. Thanks for being here. And Apostle Josiah Obing Jr., who is a general overseer Power Victory Chapel. Good morning. Good morning. How was the event? Awesome. 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 I know. I know. I know. <laughs> I know it was. It was. Yes, yes. <laughs> I know it was. Great. So, when to walk away, irrespective of how long. Mm. Mm. Hmm. This is a very interesting topic, and most of the times, ladies, ladies mostly struggle with that uh, for some reason i i know a lot of friends who are in relationships that they know at the back of their heads or when they said they have to walk out mm. they have to leave mm. but something is still keeping them and mm. even when you ask them what really is making you continue the relationship they can't open up and talk about it right. they would rather not talk and would want to endure whatever that it is that they are already enduring and continue the relationship but let's just go straight to when to call it quits. Mm -hmm. And even on a regular courtship or dating, how long should it be the first place? I mean. Okay. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning, Astrid. You are beautiful. I like the light. Like we're almost like yeah, yeah. in our college <laughs> yeah. today. And good morning to all the viewers of Joy Prime around the world. Um, so uh, this um, topic that we are discussing is one that it's not popular in the Christian dom. It's not popular because we are known to be, uh, when, when married especially, that it is for life. So that there is no discussion of walking away in a mm -hmm. Christian home. You know, that is the way it's supposed to be, that there is no discussion. It's a taboo in the home of a well-established Christian family or couple. So let me go first to dating, people who are, who are just courting yeah. or, you know. Uh, in the first place, you can never just walk into a marriage without getting to know the person. And I believe that because I am a strong advocate for counseling, both premarital counseling and postmarital counseling, uh, I, I know that when you ignore counseling and you just jump into a relationship and finalize and consummate it into marriage and things, there are several things that will pop up that could have been identified and addressed if you had gone through a premarital counseling. And many young people coming up now don't pay attention to that. And unfortunately, unfortunately, a majority of them get pregnant before they get married. So once the church gets to know that they are pregnant, then immediately they have to speed up things yeah. to get the marriage out of, out, you know, yeah. gone. Yeah. So that it will appear like they, they got married and then they got they had child. a child. But yeah. there are very many chewas in many churches <laughs> who have time to sit down and calculate, calculate. calculate yeah. the time in and everything, and they don't even give a chance to uh, pre, pre, uh, uh, matured a baby, mm. premise and things. They, they yeah. say they don't care if you had a preterm yeah. child or whatever. So far as the, the pregnancy and the baby came seven months after the wedding, <laughs> hey, time. you guys were pregnant before. Yeah. But you see, you can fool men, but you cannot fool God. Right. And I'm coming from 
the Christian angle where you, you have to put in your mind that if I'm, I'm going to marry this man or if I marry this woman or marry this man, it should be for the rest of our lives. That is what we all hope for. But unfortunately, unfortunately, the reality on the ground is a totally different ball game. Totally different ball game. When there are things like infidelity, uh, mental abuse, economic abuse, f uh, f physical abuse, uh, and, you know, infidelity. So these things are making grounds for relationships, whether it's one day old, five days old, or one year or 10 years, make it impossible for that relationship to continue. And there are grounds in the Bible that allow for you to walk away, including adultery, uh, physical abuse, okay? But mental abuse, emotional abuse is equally torturous and equally invasive that any woman or man who is going through any form of abuse, any form of abuse, uh, should really sit up and consider how long can I endure this? Remember, relationships and marriage are supposed to be enjoyed, not endured. Mm. Huh? Love is supposed to be enjoyed, not endured. How long can you endure someone beating you up, someone cheating on you, someone cursing you, someone uh, tormenting you, bringing your image down. How long? There is a time for everything. Yeah. And there is so much that a human being can take. So for me, every situation may be different. And you cannot put a blanket figure of length of time or period of time for anyone to walk away from any relationship. It depends on the, the circumstances surrounding that particular relationship. So because you, you may be able to endure a man beating you up for five years. And I may not even be able to endure it for one hour. Yeah. So it's dependent on the circumstances, on the circumstances. and the individuals involved right. in that situation. Right. So it cannot be a blanket uh, declaration that every abusive relationship must, you must walk away after one year, you must walk away after two years. Mm -hmm. or the, mm -hmm. No, mm -hmm. it depends. It depends. It depends if there are children involved. It depends on the... You, the inclusiveness of the extended family. It depends on the inclusiveness of the church family. Yeah. It depends on the, the psyche of the individuals. It depends on the financial setting. It depends on the assets that have been acquired. It depends on several circumstances. And okay. then the faith of the individuals. Okay. The faith that gives you the hope that my wife will get better, my husband will get better. It also <laughs> depends. Know, yeah. mm -hmm. This, 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 uh... <laughs> My wife would get away. Oh, it, it, he will grow. He will change. You know, that so, whole matter. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, it's quite nice some way. Yeah. So it depends on yes. how long you have taken it. Mm. Yes. You understand? Mm. Yes. And you how know. long you've been waiting for him to change. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, so this is the point. I want to cite an example and then I'll put it to you, Apostle. Um, so uh, I know somebody who... Before they got married, mm. um, they were in a, a relationship for, I think, about six, seven, mm. almost eight years. Mm. And then a child came in. Now, because a child has come in, you know, like Reverend Anaya said, right. uh, the church required that they marry. But the man wasn't ready. Mm. Mm. He wasn't ready. And so it took a long while. The child grew to about, I think, four or five years before he was like, okay, you know what? Fine, no problem. Mm. So no problem, I would do it. The woman was pushing. The, her family was pushing. His family was pushing. The church was also pushing for years. Mm. But he felt he was still not ready. Right. So at this point, okay, let me give it to you. This mm. is what you want. But here's the case where in the relationship or before the marriage came in, he was all over, being himself, having fun. Mm. The, the, the girlfriend, but, you know, at that yeah, time, girls would catch him. They would source things out. Then they would go back together. That whole thing. And mm. even into marriage. Even after marriage. Right. The lady was dealing with this. And she would go and talk to her pastor. 
as I said, wait, because God says that is your husband. <clears throat> Apostle. God says okay. that is your husband. Okay, so number one, I do not encourage anybody to marry just because somebody says God says. Okay. You don't marry because somebody said God says. Now, if you go to the Bible, start from Genesis, the Bible said God created Eve and brought Eve to Adam picking his side and creating him. After that, they had sinned, and God came asking, you know what Adam said? It is the woman you gave me. So now scripture says, he that finds a wife. Even in the days of Abraham, when he needed a wife for Isaac, he had to send for a woman to be found. And Abraham was described as God's friend. So I discourage people from walking with it. That doesn't mean God cannot speak, but, yeah. but don't walk with that slogan that God has told me, this is my wife, so I must go. So but no in fact, no, it doesn't work that way. You see, because even if God were to, were to tell you something, there are challenges that come with it. And so if you are not personally convicted of a decision you are making, and you are making it solely based on somebody telling you God said, it will backfire at the end of the day. Now, um, from the scenario you gave us, yeah. well, I, it's, I feel like they also dated for far too long. Um, eight years in a relationship, yeah. I think it's a bit too long. Yeah. Because you see, every relationship must have a purpose. It must have a goal. Why are we in this? What are we looking for? What, what do we hope to achieve out of this? So if after eight years, we haven't really figured it out, we haven't achieved what we want to achieve, how long do we want to keep doing this? What are the parameters we want to see to define success for us in the relationship? And, and also, these red flags you are speaking about were there when yes. they were in their relationship. Yeah. It would be very naive to think that just because we are getting married, just because a ring is being introduced, their character will change a... magically. Nothing works that way. Things don't just happen. And so if these traits are there, the person is not seeking counseling, like Reverend Anaya said, is not seeking to become better. You're hoping a wedding will change anything. It will not. In fact, it will become even worse for you because now that you are under my roof, um, I have you, so to speak, so I can do whatever I'm looking for. And so we have to really pay attention to these red flags. Um, uh, Reverend and I allu alluded to a couple of them, abuse, yeah. psychological, emotional, yeah. Yeah. and all that. When the respect is out of the window, you need to know that it's time to check out. When it turns toxic, to the extent that um, loving the person makes you hate yourself. You realize that you are, you are not really in a place you are supposed to be. You know, because you need to, people need to understand that you, you, you don't have to hate somebody to end a relationship. You can love somebody and want them to do well in life and still end the relationship when you realize it's going nowhere. It's going nowhere, yes. yeah. You know, sometimes it's, we become so addicted to the emotional connection that it, it prevents us from seeing things as they are. That addiction, that connection, that emotion, you know, creates a false um, reality for us that we love. It's the ideal situation, and so we are so glued to it that yeah. everybody else can see yeah. that this thing is not good for you. Everybody else is saying it, but we who are in it, who are emotionally attached to it, don't seem to realize it. And so people need to know you can love somebody and still end a relationship with You know, them. still on this same couple yeah. that I was talking on el about earlier, um, after marriage, now they wanted to have a second child. Mm. The woman wanted a second child because the first one they had a girl, now this is the mirage, she wants a boy. Now... It, at some point, at the beginning, she thought she was the problem. Mm -hmm. So, co hospitals, going to hospitals here and there, treating herself mm. because I think at some point she was developing a fibroid or something like right. that. She was treating herself. She became okay. But the man refused to go and get his sperm checked mm. if he was fertile, mm. if he could produce, you know. Right. He refused to do that. He felt like, I am a man, so... And this woman too felt like, no, if you're not going to do it, then I want to end it. I want to walk away. Mm. This is something that you fought for for years. The marriage is here. Now you have a family. Right. And although the man is behaving here and the misbehaving here and there and all of that, at some point you did your very best and then had an adjoin, eh, befi, and kakaraka. But then now there's another problem, which is he refusing okay. to go and get tested. And then now you feel like it's time for me to leave because mm. he doesn't want me he doesn't want to get this thing done for us to have the second child. And she's going to. You know, um, just a quick one. You, you must always endeavor to be with somebody who is accountable. Who is accountable to somebody. Who um, has somebody in their life they respect so much. Yeah. You see, because we are all human beings and we are prone to error. And sometimes you will need 
a, a much higher voice, a much influential voice to speak when you have spoken and it's not going anywhere. Say a pastor, say a counselor, say a family member that is revered or respected. And so we must all look for somebody, that person that is accountable to somebody. Mm -hmm. If you are dating somebody who is their own person, self-sufficient, yeah. nobody yeah. can talk to them, yeah. you know, and the whole family is telling you, oh, this person, hey, yeah. nobody talks about them. Obi and Kana said, should run away. you should run away. <laughs> because when you get in and there's an issue, who are you going to run to? True. Nobody can stop them, nobody can talk True. to them. So for this lady, if this man is accountable to somebody, there's yeah. somebody in their lives that they can, they can call him to order, mm. they can direct him, then she should run to this person and let the person bring some form of sanity and order okay. into their marriage. All right, Reverend and I, so in a situation where there's somebody that the wife, the woman can run to and reports the husband's behavior to and all that, but when a meeting is called, he goes there, he listens, yes, mm. papa, <laughs> yes, daddy, yes, mommy, mm. the moment he goes back home is, mm. how would you be mm. And so you go back to dealing with this same person and you find yourself reporting again mm. and again. And again. So first of all, we are not wrestling against flesh and mm. blood. Mm. Mm? And there are uh, connections, spiritual connections in your family and spiritual connections in my family. So the moment we come together as one, we have connected them. Right. Okay? We have connected them. Bible says that a man's enemy is his own household. His own household. So the families that we have, there is always an mm. individual or group of people from both families that wants the, 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 the uh, destruction of the marriage, right from day one. There are instances where people get married and you see somebody will give you a, a thought to eat mm. and right there at the wedding, uh, we'll take you home, but not away. Mm. I, mean, I mean, some people will be listening and say, oh, stop talking rubbish. Mm. Thank you very much. <laughs> These things exist. <laughs> yeah. The Bible says that every physical thing was made by the unseen. unseen. Yeah. Everything you see was made by what you don't see. So before you even got married, it's established in the spirit. Right. Okay? So for people to come together as one. It is strength, unity is strength, and the enemy doesn't want that. So they, they, they fight you. They fight you through uh, arguments, they fight you through mm. disagreements, mm. they fight you through trivial things, money, which is the biggest yeah. line of fight, and then sex. So if you study the person that you want to spend the rest of your life with, said, this is going to be my husband, this is going to be my wife. Yes, fine. So you call both families and they agree on what you want. You went to bring the person. It's not your family that said, come and marry Akosia. Mm -hmm. So they, because your family loves you, they are doing what pleases you. Right. And so the two of you must be able to sit together and dialogue and agree to some things and disagree to some things. Mm. But if you go and marry your enemy, somebody that doesn't love you, then get ready for a boxing range in your house. <laughs> a boxing ring in your house because everything will be a fight. Right, yeah. Even those who love each other and sometimes end up on the battlefield. So for you to marry someone who doesn't truly love you and you push yourself onto him, <laughs> you, you buy things and you buy the love. You, you right. know, you give him sex so that he'll love you. Yeah. And you buy things for the woman, you buy a car, you buy a house so that she'll love you. That love is a purchase love. And everything you buy has an expiry date. Mm. Everything you buy. The Bible says all things shall pass away, mm. except the word of God. So once you are able to get this person to marry you, this person who was resisting the marriage, yes. and you have been able to get yourself pregnant for this man to marry you, using the baby as a bait, mm. get ready. Mm -hmm. Because the man will treat mm -hmm. you as much as you want. What you deserve, he's going to give you. He doesn't love you. He has made everything clear for you to yeah. know. I don't love you. Yeah. You call him, he doesn't answer. Yeah. You buy gifts for him, he doesn't appreciate. You are giving him all your money. He doesn't appreciate. Mm. You take it and go and give it to a younger girl or an older uh. woman. <laughs> Somebody else. And you don't see that the writings are on the wall. And then you force this person to marry you. And now you, be, you make yourself a prayer warrior in the home. Mm. <laughs> Instead of enjoying the marriage, yeah. you have become a prayer warrior. 
You are fighting for this marriage and praying 24-7 because the marriage was not meant to be in the first place. So the man will boast. He will brag. He will, his ego will be everywhere in the house. And the children will come in and the children will now see that ad. That he doesn't respect mommy. Yeah. And then they'll see the signs and it will affect the boys in the marriage mm -hmm. because they'll grow up to start abusing, abusing their wives. Yeah. Yeah. So everything begins from premarital counseling. If you have a good counselor, they can be able to bring out all the hidden trends in the man's life, all the trails that they have that you don't see. Yeah. And then the counselor can advise you in confidence. Do you think this marriage is what you want? Mm -hmm. Because I have been able to tell people that don't get into this marriage. And because the woman thinks that... Just by talking she likes, with them. Yes. Okay. She likes the, the shape of the man's head. <laughs> she likes the, the structure of the man. Hmm. She likes the name that the man bears, the last name on her name. Uh. So there are these things that are dragging women into marrying the wrong person. Because they have identified some things. The family that the man comes from. Yeah. The school that he went to the job that he has, the kind of car that he has, yeah. the kind of friends that he has, the power, the fame, and all these things are things that will expire. Mm. But what will not expire is the deep love that God has given the person for you. For you. Right. And if you are not able to get that from the person, please don't rush into that marriage because uh, it will drain you. It will drain you emotionally. Yeah. It will drain all the energy in you. You become a miserable married woman. And is that what you want? And you are talking to a man that is supposed to be your husband. The Bible says the husband must love the woman. And the man does not love the woman. He is not a husband. The woman cannot respect him. She cannot submit to him mm. because he doesn't deserve her respect. You are not a wife. Yeah. That relationship has no business existing. We're wasting for time. You are just wasting your pastor's time. Pastor, pray for me. Mm. But you see, but I say that if you can find an iota of love that you can build on, if there is something about the man that comforts you, yeah. that you can build on, then we have something to, to fix that marriage. If the woman does something good that you can remember, that we can build the marriage on. Let's work on the marriage. Don't just throw it away. Because ah, true love is hard to find. And once you find one, don't let go. Work on it. Because there are no guarantees that when you go out there, you're going to see a better man. Yeah. Any good, charming, good looking, charming, rich man you see there, over the years of 40, has a woman in his life. Mm. <laughs> there, is a woman, there is a woman who assisted him to get to mm. where he is. Every young man, about 40 years, who is looking good, who is driving a nice car, mm. who is living in a nice house, who has a great job, who has money, has a woman in his life. Okay. Either the woman is the one who helped him to get there yeah. and he dumped her, or the woman is the one who is cooking good food for him to eat every evening when he gets home. Mm. There is a woman somewhere. Mm. So don't just look at the, uh, the charming man with all the money and flamboyance and think that, oh, this one, there's a good catch. You know, <laughs> uh, I'm sorry to catch you, but then now there's this trend ongoing and it looks like people are really beginning to catch on with that. Um, let me give you a typical exa example, which people would usually use. Bill Gates and Melinda Gates, mm. they got divorced what? after... You know, so many years. So many years of marriage, having beautiful children and all. Bill Gates is one of the richest in the entire world. And then now the conversation is, hey, into what to me, Jai Osikeni say, you know, and just because of what. But so it's like, okay, right now, even people who marry 30 years, 40 years are divorcing. Mm. How much more me? Right. How serious? You know, so it's like they don't necessarily even want to end up taking certain things serious mm. when it comes to relationships. Because even 30 years, 40 years, people you know, in marriages are divorcing. One thing I say all the time is bad news sells. It, it, it travels fast. Just like Bill Gates and Melinda Gates divorced, there are another couple that married in the same year they married that are still around.
right. but nobody will ever talk about talk it. About it, does, it's, yeah. it. It's not sensational enough. You know, it is the, it is the negative news, the bad news that, that always is. And then again, the fact that um, Bill and Melinda get divorced doesn't mean that that's, that's what's going to be your story. You know, that's, you, we don't know what, what the details were in oh, there. Let me give you an example. Yeah. Uh, this um, uh, well-known uh, singer, Don Moyne. Yes. A few days ago, he celebrated 52 years of being married to his wife. <laughs> there you go. And you will not sell. No, it's not and it's not selling. Words. People are not talking it's not, about it's it. Not yeah. It's not sensational. It's not something that sells. Oh, how do you... You live in uh, Kofiase. You are comparing yourself to Bill Gates. Ah, 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 ah. You are oh, living in Choco. <laughs> you are comparing yourself to Bill Gates. Ah, I you beg. Know, yeah. our, our mothers and that generation, they lived for 40 years, yeah. 50 years, yeah. 60 years. They got married yeah. and stayed together. How about right. that? Yeah. It's not sensational enough. Yeah. Don't yeah. talk about it. Yeah. Hey, in spite of the battles, what they went through and all that. If they are to open up and tell us, mm. we'll be shocked how they manage to stay there. You know, many of us, um, we don't want pressure. We don't want stress. So the, the little thing that makes us unhappy, it's like we are ready for the next thing. I think that's the order of the day yes. now. Because back in the day, it was like, no matter what, our mothers, our grandmothers, mm. our, they, they would never leave their marriage for somebody else to come and sit in it. Mm. If you go in for another woman, they will watch you. Yeah. It's either they will fight you small, yeah. and then they will lay back they and leave you. you. Go, they know you'll come back. They know you'll come back. But it's not like that today. Because if they go... Back home, mm -hmm. their mothers, which are our grandmothers, will tell them, to go open them up. Open them up. Sako Krufie. Sako Krufie. But that, the current motherhood, our, our age group, when our children are getting married, yeah. you know, we tend to, uh, we tend to like to protect the, mm. the children. Some mothers are still cooking for their sons when they are married. Mm. How, well, how can you allow witchcraft to work in you like that? <laughs> how? How do you allow witchcraft to work in you like that when your son is married and you don't want him to eat his wife's food? And because you love your son so much, so much. You, are, you choose to cook for your son to come to your home and eat when he has a matrimonial home. And you think that you are helping your son. Yep. You should bow down your head in shame. Mm. You yeah. should rather go there and enjoy the food of your daughter-in-law rather than bringing your son back to your it's home. It's time to go on a break. Uh -huh. you've, you've, you've toiled. You yeah. have done the yeah. cooking from yeah. his infancy. Yeah. Uh, go on a break. Yeah. Apostle. Yes. Mm. Allow the boys to yes. marry. Yes, allow them to marry. Allow don't. Apostle to marry. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't, don't become a second wife in your, yeah. your son. Yeah. Allow, yeah. allow them to marry yeah. and enjoy their marriage. Because yeah. you know? as much as you love your son, um, your son's wife's mother also loves her, yeah. but it's giving that freedom for them to marry. So just sit back, advise, guide, give them wisdom, and don't interfere and become a prayer topic they need to pray about. Yeah, they enjoy even being served. Yes. Yes, yes exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> because this can cause your daughter-in-law to pick up her bag and leave. And leave. Mm. You know, because the, mar the marriage home, it, uh, everything has to be done in unison. With uh, the two of them must well, agree. Yeah. The man and his wife must agree. There has to be dialogue in the home. The, the home has to be a conversational okay. environment. It shouldn't be a home of command. My mother is cooking. I'm going to eat. My mother is this. My, every day, even when you are lying down on the bed with your wife, you're talking about your mother. Mm. That, is, <laughs> that is not good. I, I'll tell you a quick story. <laughs> OK. We're going to get, um, they had given birth. They were going to um, do outdooring. the outdooring. The, the man and the wife had agreed on the name. The day of the outdoor, and the mother comes around, calls the son into the room, and gives him another name. So they step out, the pastor asks the name, and he mentioned the name <gasps> the that mother. the mother gave. The, the wife was shocked. Ah. Like, where from this one? It happens. Ah. So, what happened? She, she didn't say anything for years. She she was she oh. just wanted to check out because oh. we have already agreed on a name. Yes. And then you take and a you name surprise that your me. mother. Yes, your mother has born. When born I had born the I, child, I, oh. she struggled for years to call the child by that name. Oh. She struggled for years. But and you know names have meaning. Yeah. yeah. But you see that the things that trigger women to leave a, a relationship are not the same things that trigger men to yes. leave the relationship. Very true. Yes. Yes. I don't know, yeah. unfortunately, we have to go. Time's up. Yeah. <laughs> Time is up. But then we'll continue the conversation right. going next week. Uh, unfortunately, we had limited time. Uh, Nasi is here, and he has very interesting things to share with us. And so this is where we end. Let's talk relationship. My guests have been Apostle Josiah Obing Jr., who is a general overseer of Pa Victory Chapel, and Reverend Anaya Prempe, who is a relationship coach and chairman.
and the CEO of Tonight for a group. Thank you so much for your time this morning. My name is Cecilia Dua Akumia. Rosalind Feli is coming up next, and she will be seated with Nassim. Mm -hmm.